So you take all these rough lines and make a cleaner version of it, and then you go into say paint or render. Right? These are the general phases of most uh, design production things, right? So you take that little blob and then you, you paint it up, so the line drawing is no longer there. So the only thing holding it is the value, uh, right? So no more line. But in, in things like this, it's kind of cool sometimes, especially if you're going to keep some of the line drawing away, to keep whatever was here, part of it into here, because there's a lot of energy here, if I write it in, right? There's a lot of creative energy here. The, the designer or the artist is drawing a lot of stuff, and a lot of stuff is very, very raw. When you get to over here, you start to slow down, you start to plan your lines a little bit better. So some of that energy gets lost. So if you could keep some of that, those lines, those energetic things into here, you create an image that looks tight, and cleaned up, however, still has that fluid and that burst of energy you have in the original sketch. Uh, because if you tend to render too tight in this stage, it looks kind of dead. Your image will look kind of sterile. It's like um, not created by a human being, but created by um, a computer or something, right? So it's something that just to keep in mind. And uh, that's why I keep these um, bottom layers on, just the first generation, right? So go back to, so this is first generation. You got second generation, third generation of your sketch, so it's nice to keep your first generation as part of your third. Okay, so let me just delete that. All right, let me pause Camtasia real quick. So let me do that, and we'll come right back. Okay, dokey, and we are back. So here's a line drawing. I'm just gonna uh, minimize this layer down so you get a boom, boom. Okay. Um, next step. All right, we have the line drawing. Uh, for this type of rendering, because the final is not a hundred percent rendered out, meaning that the line drawing is still somewhat there, I tend to keep this a little bit more um, simplistic uh, when it comes to rendering. So, let me turn off all these layers. I create a mask layer. This layer here is basically just filling in the line work. This allows me to do a bunch of little things later on. For example, I can select the whole thing, so it becomes a, a selection a layer, like a mask, right? It allows me to paint just within this character and not uh, evolve the background. Now, if this was a more elaborate type of painting, for example, he's sitting inside an environment, uh, where we want this to war, we want this to be a little bit more painterly. We actually don't really need this layer, which is approach this painting like uh, like an environment painting, where everything is done as a whole, where the background, everything is coming together. Now, but in this case, which is rendering uh, him only, so this mask will help make certain uh, tasks a little bit easier. Okay, so I put that mask in, very easy to do, just take a giant big brush and then just uh, paint whatever you want and then delete it out. So you have that. Uh, put a little bit of ground shadow here. Oops, this one's a ground shadow. So that way this guy doesn't float away. Now it looks like he actually uh, belongs to the environment. Uh, this stuff, this floor thing I actually put in later, it, but uh, you know, you can see I just scratched on some paint and put some stuff here to give it a sense of uh, flooring. So he's actually standing on something versus a um, void, a weird, you know, gray void. All right, so once I have this, it's easy to add the uh, lighter layers, which is here, right? So this is just a base layer, okay? This layer you can see is set on normal. What I do is I just pick the base color or base value, all right, pick that. Just go in here and then just keep moving this up as you go, uh, getting lighter and lighter as you go. So it's not any kind of special layer, it's just set on normal. Um, and it gives me a, a range of value to work with. So I have my light. In this case, the light is coming from above, right? A little bit above, a little bit from the right, you know, a little bit from the left, kind of just a dome light all around this guy. So the light is actually hitting from, um, let me make a new layer here. Right, the light sort of coming like this above this guy, like like a photo studio. You know, above him is this lamp that's doing this. Yeah, so you're gonna get some hot highlights around here. You're gonna get some on his arms, but all in here is gonna be bounced light from the floor, which will um, which I'll show you guys in a bit. So let's just turn this light on and off. Boom, boom. But right away, you, you you're already getting form development because remember earlier we talked about how these things are cylinders and all these kind of things. By understanding how these uh, forms are working, when you render, it becomes much easier. So if I turn off my line drawing, even at this stage, some of the forms are starting to read. It's not the best thing yet, but it's definitely reading, and that's why the best way to check form is by turning off your line drawing. If this thing is reading well without any line, then obviously your forms are starting starting to read. Okay. Here I pick out some of the elements that's not going to hit by light. For example, here, these little spines that he has, these little um, little fish, reptile-looking things. If the light's coming from here above, the bottom side of these are not going to hit by light. Uh, same with this eye uh, socket area here. 
right? It's a loose drawing, but these things are quite important because if all this is bathing light, then the viewer have no idea what these forms are doing because in reality, if they're doing this, there's no way the light could hit the underside. Yeah, they cannot hit that. So just really quickly got rid of that to show the students, you know, be very careful when it comes to lighting. Okay, continue doing some, some more, darkening certain areas, for example, here, if you look, it's a little nose ridge. His nose is a form that's, uh, let me do a new layer here. His nose is doing something like this, coming around. Here's a positive, whoops, positive, to a negative, to a positive, to a negative, down to a negative, right? So that's his contour line for, right? This is the eye ridge there. The eye's gonna go in, cheek, jaw, go around. All right, so that's the contour that makes up this character. And you gotta make sure the lighting, even for when it's a rough sketch, somewhat follows that. So your viewer doesn't get confused as to what is doing this form. That's a center line I'm drawing right now. This is the center line, right? You can kind of see a hint of that even below this. You can see these lines here and these little tiny baby spines, right? Usually if this is an animal, it'll grow right off the center. So that's the center line. So this form, if I just draw a few more here, this kind of stuff is really helpful when you are drawing or designing to un really understand what you are uh, designing, what you are putting on paper. You know, so my approach is always based on forms and shapes and value. It's not really based on uh, feeling, you know, uh, drawing something because it feels right. Because as a designer, if you do that, and how do you explain it, you know, to a 3D modeler, or oh, just model it till it feels right, you know. Um, if you have all the time in the world, maybe that could work. But generally in production, they're like, what does it look like? So I need to model it exactly what it looks like. Do you know what I'm saying? So uh, again, all subjective, you know, everything has its water uh, in design or in production. So whatever works for you, but uh, this is my method. So I just drew a few more contour lines. You can see a very clear understanding when you're designing of what's happening to these forms as they travel across your design. Okay, so here's a little bit wireframe of these forms. See, by doing this, you have a very good understanding of where light should hit and where light shouldn't hit. You know, in this case, you got some complex curves going on there. Big bulge cylinder here. Let's do the does that. These will come across, make the bulge of that muscle. These will come in. There's a bend underneath. So area, the area here that's going underneath, that's start receiving bounce light from below because that surface is facing below. All right, you get the core in this area here and you get the highlights in areas like that. Okay, so that's all it is. It's just a little contour line. So I'll keep that on just, just for fun, Let's see. It looks kind of cool. It looks like a, this guy's being scanned by some kind of a 3D laser, you know. Okay, turn it off, so what's the next layer? Continue building up some of these um, highlights and forms, just try to quickly get the um, overall forms down. So let's try to turn off our line drawing again. Boink. So you can see without a line drawing, he's already holding uh, his form. So if I, especially if I zoom out, you can kind of see this. Right? And overall it's very monochromatic, so it's easy to see value versus having a bunch of colors on him. Uh, it's just brown, but same thing as a grayscale. I can very clearly see what light and dark values are. Okay, This is a masking I did for his armor. Now, this is local value stuff, and I'll talk about that very quickly here. See, right now, he has one value set, as is you know, as if his skin and whatever armor, let's turn line drawing back on. All right, he's got this kind of a organic armor. Right, it could be part of his body, but I think when I designed this, I meant to be a external armor, like he's actually wearing these kind of plates, um, these kind of things on his arm, right? His uh, hands actually come out from that armor. Here's a weapon. So local value, which I did here, which I masked out the armor layer. What this means is that, um, I think I talked about this before in a previous uh, tutorial, but just in case I didn't, 